Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading and the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders, are both free downloads to help you develop the skill set, the mindset, the discipline to master the markets. The link is down below in the box, the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, and today. Uh, going through a video hopefully that will help simplify things for traders who are still having some challenges and maybe even clarify things further for traders that are starting to break through and making big gains in their trading. I, I have thought about this in terms of how I can maybe simplify things in, in the understanding for traders that are struggling or still inconsistent. I know there's traders that have just gone in leaps and bounds and really grown their accounts and other traders are still struggling to get consistent uh, whatsoever. So one of the exercises that I would encourage you to do is, depending on the session that you're trading, is to go back and understand the importance of all the steps that we put together in terms of Monday being day one for the, the new week, a potential new template, and that's our opening range. So we can have trades on our day one, but it also establishes the initial high low for the week. and once that becomes apparent in terms of how they may use the Monday to quote unquote flip the book or reverse the market inside or put in a peak formation or just extend a range or trigger new weekly breakout levels, new highs or lows, and then establish an initial balance on Tuesday. So 80% of the time, one of those levels typically will tend to hold as an extreme by the end of the close of the week. So for example, if I'm trading the US session, we can walk back through each day of the week. We're looking at the Canadian dollar uh, on our Monday. I come in for the US session. And as I've mentioned, I compare all three US Swiss, US Canadian, US Yen of the basket of instruments to get an idea out of those three if there's a best trade setup. So again, in my session uh, for New York, uh, we'll just put the five minute charts up. And when I come to the screen somewhere in this 7 a.m. time, I'm looking for a market that number one has possibly already broken a daily high or low level. So we can come back and look at the overall uh, weekly levels and put that into context. So if we start our week, we already know that we've broken the low of the week on the Japanese yen when we come into our US window. Often throughout the week, the Asian and London sessions can, depending on the instrument, may often be putting in a high or low of the day. London may continue the range if Asia's put in the higher low or London may put in the higher the low. And often sometimes we'll come into the US window and we'll already be on the last leg of a move, which typically will be a low hanging fruit opportunity if indeed it does present. And so one of the simplest and easiest trades that I often look for is the low hanging fruit. So looking at Monday, regardless if any one of these pairs was taken on the US crosses, and again, I will only typically take one if I take any at all. Again, I will look through all the instruments, the six major pairs, the pound yen, euro yen, crosses, oil, gold, and the three indexes, the US indexes, S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones 30. So again, with those baskets, I'll look for if I'm interested in one of the indexes for the same reason, uh, for the US session only, I will not trade those in any other time. Uh, there are opportunities for London sometimes and, and Asia also, but my window is the US window. So again, just looking at these trade setups, without numbers or anything, my main criteria right away is do we have a market that has gone into play or into activity? We've triggered other time frame traders right off the beginning of the week. And any one of these three pairs, again, gave a low hanging fruit opportunity in the US session. Yen, and we have a market that broke out again in the Asian window, continued to make lower lows and pumped up in the London gap time right into the US open for the low hanging fruit continuation short trade. Now I'm not going to uh, put in all of our criteria. I'm just demonstrating that you can do this for any one of the sessions that you're trading. So number one, I want to see a level broken. 
And that again triggers other time frame traders. So you've heard me say the phrase uh, when other time frame traders are in the market, longer time frame, hourly, four hour, daily, uh, weekly, we now have bigger money driving these potential moves. So uh, it's not the five minute trader that, you know, we're not inside of a range where it's an inside day. We have other time frames potentially driving this move if we're going to take the trade in our timing window. So that's a really important thing to understand because that gives you the confidence to know that if you have an opportunity that presents no news on the calendar on the Monday, we have the New York open to gain the Canadian dollar and there's no number levels or anything on the charts. I'm just demonstrating the process. We have a market that breaks the front side heading into the U S session, lower lows, lower highs, the pump up on the New York open and the engulfment and the collapse for the low hanging fruit trade. So again, any one of these three pairs on Monday gave a nice opportunity for a U.S. session trade. We could do the same thing for the Asian session on our Monday. Again, we have a market that right off the start of the day breaks through a weekly level and gives a short trade in the beginning of our, well, middle of our Asian session. And this market gave traders in the area of 50 to 75 pips in the Asian session Again, this is using the five minute uh, universal entry criteria from the playbook. And I'm just painting the picture of the importance. Number one, there's a, a breakout of a daily level or a weekly level, but then in the session itself, allowing that market to set up and give us an entry. Swiss franc, same scenario. We have a market that breaks the level right at the beginning of the day. We have a, a other time frame traders triggered into the market. And this market again gave a beautiful universal five minute entry for a short trade in the Asian session. As did the Canadian dollar, a market that had triggered a previous day's high and failed into the close of the session, false break, and continued to break down on, on uh, from Friday nights into Monday morning. We triggered the daily low, the pump up and the M structure inside of our session timing window with a broken down level, a broken down low, and a vertical move in the Asian session. This is on Monday. So again, just comparing the three, it wouldn't have mattered which pair you took if you were trading one of the US dollar cross pairs, pound, uh, sorry, the yen, Swiss, or Canadian. Number one, the process, a, a, a daily level was broken. We have a market that pumps up and then reverses and dumps. And this is in the Asian session. Now we could do the same thing for the London session. Again, we redraw our low of the day because we've broken through that. We have other time frame traders involved. We potentially have a high bull as major resistance and, and into our window, this market gives a short trade on our universal five minute entry criteria. Again, just simple pump up front side again, uh, with our, the playbook, the universal model gives traders an entry on that right shoulder for a vertical move back down through the low of the day. That was on the Japanese yen. Swiss francs, similar. We, we redraw our low of the day heading into the session. We've broken through the low, triggered other time frame traders. This market didn't quite break down as well until later in the session, but, but again, the simple model breakout pullback, breaking structure on the inside, the pump up into the London open, and the dump and consolidation broke the low, pulled back and went vertical. So whether traders scalped and just got out or they held this for the vertical move, uh, this market gave traders a short trade in the London session after breaking out of the low of the day. Canadian dollar, not so uh, fr fruitful. Again, London session, uh, each pair, a market may move certain pairs during during the week may move like the canadian dollar may we may discover as we go through the week we'll see that it may have moved really well in london on one of the occasions but coming back to our model if traders had shorted this for a low hanging fruit they still got something out of the trade if again uh, not suggesting this was a best trade setup but even if they shorted this on the right shoulder five minute entry criteria it still gave them 25 pips higher high on the inside vertical move down to the low of the day that eventually goes back up to the high of the day in the U S session. So 
Coming back to comparing them, though, looking for an ideal candidate out of the three in the London session, we had a market that came back up inside to the previous day's breakout level, which can become significant resistance. And we also had a pair that traded up into the high bolt major resistance area and broke down. So obviously the Japanese yen was the better of the three, but just also trying to point out that Regardless of the session that you're trading, now I'm only looking at these three pairs because there obviously was better candidates in the London window, perhaps maybe on the euro or the pound on Monday. But the important thing to remember is that other time frame traders were triggered into the market. These levels are what is significant. Daily highs and lows, weekly highs and lows. Now this is a weekly level that we've broken, but also Friday's low. And that is what's important. As the week evolves, we will establish daily highs and lows and weekly highs and lows. Some of those will be inside. And so if we get a first green day, the idea would be the first green day should be trading back from low of week to high of week. So we'll show an example on the Canadian dollar where traders asked that it was a first green day and couldn't understand why it wasn't a first green day. So we're looking at the Canadian dollar. We have our Monday that establishes our opening range for the week. Now on our Monday, we broke down, took out the low of Friday before popping back up into our US window and breaking down. So we have a market that pulls back up, triggers shorts, that low of the day into the market for day one breakouts. So we already have shorts in the market. So again, the question I always suggest to traders is who's in the market? But we made a lower high in the US session. So again, where is the money? And, and these are areas I, I talk about being targets. So we have three types of trades, trend trades, reversal trades, and, and range bound markets, trading ranges. But when we're in the beginning or the front side of a move, so coming back to day one, day two, day three, if we come back up and look at our Friday, we have high of the week, we have volume outside the last day heading into our new week, we have volume trapped outside of the high of the day, that begins our day count. And if you're uncertain, the number one thing to remember is this. if so we have our high of the week, that's obvious. But the day that the next day they break a daily low, that confirms that this is our day one. Okay? That's the high of the week in this case, and that is our failed breakout. That starts our day count, day one, day two. But this is the first day we have breakout traders short in the market. That also is our opening range for the new week. That is the new weekly high and low. We redraw our levels. Now, if we come back and we just look at our London session again, our London session opens up down low and pumps up to the high of the day. This breakout area from the previous day's low is a potential area for this market to go to because that is where breakout traders came into the market and they have not been stopped out yet. But this market on a lower low on the inside which is our formula again for lower low on the inside is the pump and dump gives traders a nice vertical move heading into the US window where we had major red news. So now we have our initial balance. We have a low of the week, our day one opening range and a high of the week, lower high inside, but the high of Monday is up top. So we have a market that breaks out and closes back inside closes back inside in balance as we saw on Monday, but Monday went vertical again and triggered new breakout traders into the market on day three of the new week, Wednesday. And also we have day one, day two, day three down. The market trades in Asia right down into the low of the US session, takes out these higher level longs before pulling back and reversing inside. Now I'm, I'm walking back through the process so we triggered breakout traders into the market on Tuesday and on day three, they go vertical into the low of the week. We have breakout traders in the market. Where are their stops? Where are their stops? Of course, they're at the high of the day. Now this market goes parabolic in London and continues in the US window to go to the high of the week. Traders were calling this first green day. This cannot be a first green day because we have broken through a daily high and the high of the week. First green day would be down here, giving us the opportunity to go to the high of the week. 
Now, this is a three-day, three, three, day, three session parabolic setup, US, Asia, and Europe for the parabolic move in London. Okay. US puts the low of the week in place. Asia trades down into it, breaks structure on the inside, and short squeeze for the parabolic move in London. So in order for this to be a first green day, it cannot violate any daily highs or lows. We've already taken out the weekly high. So traders were looking for a first green day opportunity, but we've already taken out the high of the week. And the next day, we don't trigger any levels. So remember, on Tuesday, we've broken out and triggered breakout traders heading into the new day. They trade back down into that low of the week. We've already triggered breakouts when we start the new day. So this may, means that this market is still in play because they're shorting traders into the low of the week. The next day, we have breakout trades that have potentially failed now, but they're auctioning back and forth inside of the range, which leads us to avoid this type of market because we are inside and we do not have any other longer time frame traders trading this. Whereas on day three, we're down low. It's a short squeeze setup. It's, this is a setup. When we're in our inside day, we do not have any setups unless traders stuck around until later in the US session for a high of the day shorting opportunity that at the end of the session triggers breakout traders into the market. This peak formation, therefore, becomes our day one from the high of the week. So on Friday, we trigger the low of the day on Asia. That automatically makes this our day one count. This is a first red day. Day one, day two, inside day, first red day. They trigger breakout traders into the market. Trade back down into our new low. So we go lower, we redraw the low. That breakout fails. That breakout fails. So we take out the low and they go back above the breakout level. That is higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside after a failed breakout without taking out the high of the day is a dump and pump setup into our US session. Dump and pump into our US session. At the failed breakout level, we had news at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, New York time. But this market, just demonstrating the process, coming back to we have a market that's in play now. It's broken the daily level. Traders had the opportunity to short this in Asia based on the first red day thesis. So we have our last leg down, our peak formation bull candle. This market pumps up and gives a short trade. This is a 15-minute chart in our Asian window. They're taking traders down into the low. That breakout fails into our U.S. window. Higher high, higher low for the dump and pump setup. So the, the thesis I'm painting here is that these levels are all critical to identifying the best trade setups. We did not have any weekly high or low levels broken until Tuesday took out Monday's low. This is the high of the week. This is the low of the week in our new week. As we go lower, these daily levels become the next relevant area for the market to move back towards. And obviously, Monday's US session high was taken out in the parabolic short squeeze setup, which I mentioned previous on the Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar seems to love short squeeze opportunities. We had a day one count starting our, our move back up, our pump day, first red day inside day, which gave a shorting opportunity in Asia. And you'll notice when Asia breaks the low on day three, this typically, especially at the end of the week, can set up the reversal now, which gives us our trapped volume at the low of our Friday heading into Monday. If they break a daily high level, this will be our day one count heading into the new week. No idea where this market will go. We could head up towards the previous week's high, or this market may give us a three-day setup that could attack back down to our most recent week's low. So these 
da the daily count, the levels, the big box. You know, we, I demonstrated this trade uh, in the community post, the three-day parabolic setup, which is the same setup we just saw in gold, just a different variation. We had our trap volume. This is an hourly chart. But understand that the, that the, the hourly, the four-hour, 15-minute, uh, whatever charts you're using are, are rele irrelevant. It's about understanding when they've broken out and failed, what our day count is and the type of setup that is is building into the session that you're trading. We had our inside day. We have our parabolic three-day, day zero opportunity heading into the U.S. window. Looking at our similar scenario, we have a weekly high. And if we come back and just go back to identifying the levels, where's the money where where could this market be going if it's going to go after another level of where traders are in the market and so when i go to a four hour chart it's only because i can see the highs and lows of the weeks and that gives me an idea of where this market has potential to move to or want to move to on the day if indeed we have a setup heading into that session so if indeed it's going to go and this is a five minute chart I want to know where could this thing head to because there's highs and lows established that this market may go vertically through whether there's news no news uh, if we already have the setup the news will be the catalyst to complete that move when the week started with gold we had a market that on our friday broke out of the high of the week and closed out of balance that breakout continued into the new week on a gap that formed a low of the day and went higher and closed out of balance. So again, the question is, is number one, who's driving this market? Clearly other time frame traders are driving this market. We have a market that has broken out and continued to stay broken out. So understand that we have a market that has broken out and continued to stay out of balance. So who's in the market? Well, obviously, long traders are in the market. We have a market that breaks out of the daily high. And we have an opening range now for our new week. Monday's high low sets the opening range for the new week. By Tuesday, we have our initial balance and opening range, and that will establish the high low. And 80% of the time or more, one of those extremes will tend to hold as the higher low of the week. We have a market that breaks out on Wednesday and reverses and fails and breaks out of our opening range high low. This is an opening range breakout, an opening range breakout. So as one trader said to me, he said, well, most breakouts fail. That is correct. But when they don't, they pull back and they go and continue the trend. We have our day one. We have our false break that gives us our thesis heading into the new day. We don't break a daily high the next day, but we have an inside day. But we still have a market that has stayed broken out of at the close of the inside day of our opening range. So now, if this was a false break reversal of the inside bar, we would have typically seen that early in the day. And that breaks out. And if it closes down low, that would give us our first red day. We have a market that goes into consolidation underneath the high of the day. And as one trader repeated to me yesterday, it went sideways underneath the high of the week. That was a dead giveaway. And I've repeated this and I say it frequently. When a market goes into consolidation inside of the high or on top of the low without taking it out, it is coiling for a large move. We have a market that has broken out of the opening range and stayed broken out. So a lot of traders were expecting or looking for a reversal. Now, prior to coming to our U.S. window, prior to coming to our U.S. window, let's just look at our weekly high-low levels. So if I back this chart up and look to my left, I can't really see a lot which is why I will go to my four hour chart because I can see levels better. And as one trader thought, well, we, we didn't go over any of these four hour patterns in them. No, I'm just looking at where is the money? Where's the most recent level? Now let's look at something with this four hour chart. This four hour chart breaks down a week ago and 
other time frame traders who sold the high of the week, the high of the month, on a four hour move were in this market. So if I look at the first level of where this market may have gone to, to trap traders, to stop them out, whatever, we have all of this market's already trading here when we come into our US window. We're already above this level. We're above the high of that pin on the four hour chart. Before the US window opens, we're already above all of that. So my question then is this, where is the next level? So we have potentially a low of the day as a target, and we have the high of the month. Now, I don't know what this market's going to do. I can have a thesis, and as I said earlier in the video, I don't know what it's going to do until price gets there. How does price behave when we get to our timing window? We have major red news at 10 a.m. We have a market that is trending. It's broken out and stayed out of balance above the opening range in a market that has broken the high of the previous week and continued to go higher. This market gave a long entry heading into the US window, right at the high of the week. Do you notice there's been no stop hunt? So even if we, as, we, as we've mentioned in the playbook, most stop hunts are 25 to 50 pips outside of the range. They haven't, they haven't done that. This market is coiling for an explosive move. You only have one option and that's the trend trade. But this is 15 minutes into this, the new US window, heading into 20 minutes as it breaks out. So understanding that this is a trend trade, that's all that this is. But if we come back now to our three day setup and we understand that this now potentially is a parabolic three day, three session setup, we now have a possible measured move as a target in a range expansion taking out not only the high of the month, but continuing further in a range expansion. Now just coming back again, and, and this is an exercise that you can do in the session that you're trading, is looking just purely at levels. So we have a market that's already broken out. So we've triggered other time frame traders right off the beginning of the week. They've traded down into the low of the US, sorry, the Asian session in the Europe London window continued to auction higher and given a low hanging fruit continuation trade in the US window. So again, demonstrating the process, we have other time frame traders already in the market. Uh, thesis could have been in this particular opportunity that this market was going to do a measured move, which eventually it did complete heading into the next day. Again, price is always in a box, but it's these levels that are significant. We broke out of a weekly high and the Friday's high and the weekly high heading into our new week. The next day, we have a market that, coming back to looking at our sessions, the US has put the high of the day in place. Asia and London have not violated a daily low or high, and we are still inside of the US session high. This forms our new high and low of the day. We had major red news and a low hanging fruit scalp in the US session after the news was released in the New York open for 50 pips. Now gold obviously has volatility that will give us those opportunities, but I really need to emphasize the importance of when other time frame traders are in the market. We come to our new day. We come to our new day. We have no other time frame traders triggered on the inside day and our Asian session is a low probability, no best trade setup opportunity. So I hope that traders recognize this because this is where traders are taking trades and we're inside. We're inside of an inside day. We're inside of a session and we don't have any levels broken, but you can see that this is a box. We have a box and we're on day three. So now we have a market that breaks out. Some traders will be in this trade on the breakout on the short side in our London window. But once we break out and this market goes sideways into consolidation and reverses in the gap, there are traders that were able to go on the long side if they saw this as a best trade setup. Once we are outside of the range, outside of the previous day's high or low, this is an opportunity for a reversal. 
We head into our US session, the market breaks out. And very similar again, this is where we saw a market that had already broken out and went up three levels of rise outside of the high of the week. And we saw the New York open reversal for a 50 pip blow off session scalp. But remember, we're outside. We have other time frame traders in our window that are now in the market. We have a market that has broken out and closed out of balance. This market is in play when we head into our Asian session. Our last peak formation high bull is just at the 50 level. The market gives us a shorting opportunity in our Asian session on day four, our Thursday. But you'll notice when we come into our London window, we are inside. We have a market now that's blown off and taken out the low of the US session and gone into consolidation. We now have a market that is inside of our Asian session high and low. We haven't triggered any other time frame traders on the day itself. And this breakout that originally we thought failed is still outside of the day one, our Wednesday's high of the day. So this market now is inside of our weekly high and our breakout level from Tuesday's high of the day. We've taken out our, our Asian session high. Just close that down. And that means that we redraw the levels heading into our new day, which show up on our day five and coming back and repeating that we now have a market that has broken out of our Monday's high of the week, our opening range and stayed in breakout. So remember, most breakouts fail. This breakout has not failed. It broke out of Monday's opening range and stayed on top. It made a higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside is a dump and pump setup. They dump it down into consolidation. Asia breaks out of our consolidation at the bottom of a 100 pip box moves up and moves sideways underneath the high of our US session underneath the high of the week. We already know our monthly high of the month level is up top. I made mention of this in the morning that the monthly, the high of the month level where it was again, the setup is here, but I still need to see price behave. So some traders ask, well, why didn't you say you were going long? I don't know that I'm going long until I get a confirmation of entry. So we have a setup. I could tell traders this is going long. Traders could buy the market and they could come down first and then go up. So it's not my job to predict. My job is to identify a potential setup of where a market may be coiling for an explosive move, but I still need to see price behave according to getting me in and confirming my entry. And then if it goes parabolic, if this market breaks out in a parabolic move, as I mentioned, do not counter trend because we're heading to the high of the month. Now remember, when this session starts, we're already inside of the previous week's high and low from the high of the month. Remember, we're inside of the four hour bar from the previous week at that, in that time, at that high, that week, the week's high and low, we're inside of the, the bar that collapsed and broke down from the original move. So when we head into our US window, we are already in the parabolic model. This market only had one option, and that was to go vertical. And so that long entry right away on our five minute criteria allowed us to be in the market right off the bat. It allowed us to add positions. It allowed us to ride this prior to the news and then take positions off and re-enter and stay in this market for an extended range expansion of the high and low of the week. When the market moves this strong, it's a very high probability of completing the pattern. So again, go back, study classical charting, Peter Brandt, Edwards and McGee, Schaubacher. 
A lot of traders ask me, well, where, where did you get this from? I keep repeating this. Go study Peter Brandt, Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee. Those books are almost 100 years old. Not Peter's, but Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee. Those books are 90, 70, 80, 90 years old. Classical charting. These are just range expansions of measured moves. They are ge just as a large geometrical rectangle. We could look at the pound from the beginning of the week or the euro. So again, we have our high low. Obviously, this is a market that I wouldn't have touched on the Monday if I was trading the pound. This wouldn't have been on my radar. I would have been looking for something at a high or a low heading into our London window. With We've triggered other time frame traders. This market obviously gave an opportunity in our U.S window after taking out the low we have a large rectangle but nothing in the london session no high quality best trade setup on our tuesday similar we have a market that has again u.s session high asia puts in our low of the day the market trades down to our low of the day in our london window and again a low probability type of day there is no best trade setup here some traders may have shorted this looking for a collapse down through the low of the day so visually identify that you're you're underneath the high when you get a lower high like this inside and they're jamming you in they're going to take out the high they're trapping traders down low for an explosive move whether it's on major news or later in the session but this is a trap we're inside we have not triggered other time frame traders we have our opening range and initial balance for the week we come to our day three we have volume up high volume up high we have not broken any levels, but now we also have a U.S. session low. We have a U.S. session high. The market trades up to that level in the Asian session and takes out the low of the day in our Europe London window without taking out the low of the previous day. So again, understanding that when they go sideways, on top of a low or underneath a high, this market is coiling for an explosive move. It's day three. Day three, this market has the potential now. If we zoom back out to our three session setup again, this is only one pair. We might have looked at the euro and chose the euro and we will look at that because it did take out the high of the week in our London window for a best trade setup. So comparing the two, our euro on day three takes out the high of the week for breaking down and going into consolidation we have other time frame traders in the market our universal entry criteria is already met heading into the end of the window for a large move now understand we're inside of a box we'll put the 15 minute on here we have day one day two day three our pump up day was friday so pump up day they continue we have long traders in the market on our new week right Who's driving the market? Longs are driving the market. Breakout traders, we have a lower low on the inside. A pump, day one. We have day two, inside day. Day three triggers the high of the inside day and breaks down. So look again, study your inside days. It does not break out and stay out, which we see on Friday, we'll look at that. It breaks out and pulls back inside and remember, one bar traps the entire day. This bar breaks down. Everybody now is caught up top. If they haven't taken, gotten out, or if they're if they're long, breakout traders are in the market. Breakout traders are in the market at the high of the week. Where are their stops? Where are the other sides of those traders? Of course, down here. Now we have a high low consolidation up top we now potentially have a opportunity for a range expansion from high of week to low of week in our timing window in our timing window so i'm trying to emphasize that these levels are what's critical highs of weeks I'm not using four hours or anything else if i can't see where the level is yes of course i'm going to hit the four hour to see where's the low of my week at Where's the high of my week? Okay, well, we broke out of the high of the previous week uh, in our new week, but that breakout failed on day three and gave us a high of the day, high of the week, shorting opportunity in our London window. We already have broken out of our weekly levels. That market went vertical to the low of the week.
So Thursday was an inside day again on the euro. So I, I want to point out, study these inside days. It breaks out of the inside day. That is not a false break. That is a breakout. Now we've seen this the last two weeks on the euro. The market makes a higher high, breaks a daily level. We have other time frame traders in the market. It makes a higher high and begins the dump back into the breakout prior to our major news at 10 a.m. New York time. But no, without putting any other criteria on the charts, our news candle makes a higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside. Thesis is that the low of the day may now be locked in in place in our U.S. window. One push down, two pushes down, three pushes down. Where do I want to get filled? I want to get filled anywhere underneath the breakout level from the previous day's high. And I'm going to put my stop in place underneath because this ver market is going to go vertical back to the high of the day. Again, I'm not suggesting that this is the best out of all the instruments to choose, but it's the process. Creeping trend down. Break in structure on the inside on our news candle. Three pushes back into our breakout underneath of the high of day. Coiling. Now, if you put your universal five-minute entry criteria on here, you will also notice we have an ascending triangle building for an explosive move back up and this potentially can give us a target for one full range expansion back up to the high of the day you can walk through every single instrument you want but i'm just i just will go through the s p and then we'll call it a day but i'll encourage you to put your session timing windows on here um, walk yourself through the process and understand whatever you're trading look for the best opportunities but make sure you understand that when a daily level is broken, that that is when we have other time frame traders in the market. Now on our Monday, this, this blue dotted line here should not be here. Uh, for some reason, this market is painted that on here today, but it broke out of Friday's high on our Monday prior to our US session window. And actually we'll put our timing window on there just so traders can see this. I, I only trade these markets in the US window. But just looking at the big picture coming into our U.S. window, we have a market that breaks out. It breaks out of the high of the day from Friday and reverses before coming into our U.S. session window. Lower lows, lower high, and gives us a low-hanging fruit pump and dump right into the open of our U.S. session window. This is a five-minute chart. Our five-minute entry criteria are met, and this is prior to the New York Open prior to the New York equity market open. Perfect opportunity to be done and dusted before the session even begins, but we get a lower high right into our 930 New York open. And again, on this market, uh, as with most markets, once I'm at a higher low of the day, I will look at using the one minute chart, but the five minute entry criteria still gave traders an entry. It's hard to manage this big of a move uh, off the low of the day. Uh, but it still was explosive and continued back up to the high of the London gap time to give traders a very explosive opportunity if they were going on the long side from the low of the day. But the capitulation on the short side right off the bat on day one was a low hanging fruit continuation trade after the failed breakout. So we had other time frame traders driving this move. They've got breakout traders triggered. Where is the money? Day two. We come back and we're inside. It's an inside day. Again, this is a day that I will avoid. So by the time the market gets up towards the previous day's high, uh, it's outside of my timing window. So we have our day one, then we have our inside day. Wednesday, however, breaks out. So traders in the London session may have caught this move back down to the low of the day. But heading into our New York window, when we get a move like this and we have major red news, we redraw our levels. We have a market that pins through the low. So I don't draw the, the low of the day down at the pin because the low of the day is in place after we've broken it. We redraw it. They've pinned through it and then made a higher high. Again, no opportunity here unless traders are looking to trade this type of scalp in, in this market. I do not touch this at all. Uh, the ranges and the volatility are such that there are opportunities, but it's 
just not what I would consider to be an optimal entry for myself. I would look at another market for an easy low hanging fruit or high day, low day opportunity in our day three. We head into our Thursday, however, and again, we have a market that has a failed breakout now at the low of the previous day. We have a failed breakout at the low of the previous day. This is potentially an opportunity that I would consider because we have a creeping trend in our window back into our low of the day. We redraw our low. So we've got a market now that is traded back into our breakout, our breakout level from the previous night's US session on the failed breakout. It pumps up, breaks down in our London gap, lower highs, lower lows, heading into our US session window. They pump it up and break the lower highs right at the beginning of the window. They dump it down. New York opens and pumps up, breaks structure on the inside and dumps it. And this is a third hour opportunity off the low of the day. Our five minute entry criteria is met right near the half hour mark in our third hour for our low day on our Thursday after the failed breakout for a move back towards. Remember, they've triggered breakout traders. They triggered breakout traders short. Where is the money? Number one, first place is the high of the day. The next place will be the high of the previous breakout day. Back up to the high of the day. So these levels are critical to understand. We have a market that the breakout failed. They pump it up. So remember, the US session made a high low. They closed outside of that range, went higher, but they didn't take out the high of the day. They broke down and got traders shorting back into the failed breakout. Third hour opens. We have a break in structure at the New York Open. Dump and pump, engulfment, pin hammer, five minute entry criteria, universal entry criteria for an explosive short squeeze at the low of the day. And then we head into Friday and Right off the bat, prior to our US window, we have other time frame traders triggered into the market. We have lower lows. They break the low of the day. They go lower into the open of the session, lower low, lower high. Pump, New York open, major red news at 10 a.m. They pump it back to the high again and the collapse five minute entry for a short trade high of session back to the low of the day again not suggesting that this is the best trade setup but the process was there this was an opportunity for a hundred plus pips on this market after the failed breakout day one day two day three high of week failed breakout lower high lower low pump up news candle pump back to the high of the day and the collapse and the vertical move back through the low of the day. So master the levels. It's about the levels, false breaks, trend trades, failed breakouts, measured moves. It's about the levels. It's not about the junk inside. Let them break out first. If you're inside on a low probability day, wait till they break it out. If you're inside, avoid this, avoid this type of stuff. This is what I'm trying to emphasize to traders. You're picking trades before your session window or in a session window that is is inside of highs and lows let them trigger other time frame traders into the market all the trades are the same when you you are either going to have a dump and a pump or a pump and a dump there's only two types when they break down into their essential criteria rate at entry even with a trend trade if we go back to gold as i said Higher high on the inside is the setup for the dump, 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 consolidation, pump, 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 higher highs. It's still higher highs, higher lows. It's trending dump and pump, dump and pump, dump and pump, three session dump and pump. So. You know, I emphasize, uh, again, I'm just trying to simplify and clarify things. And the easiest way I can do that is to suggest you go back through, identify your sessions, but understand on the day that you're trading, have they triggered other time frames? Has there been a breakout already? We saw breakouts at the beginning of the week. Did the breakout succeed? Did they trigger new breakouts? How did the market close? 
Did it close out of balance? There's our pump day, inside day. It doesn't pump the high, it pumps the low. Possibly a new day count, day one, day two, day three. Breaks out at the high of the day. This is our new day count, day one, day two, inside day. It's either going to be a trend trade or a reversal trade. What is our setup looking like? As I said, this was a large ascending triangle. And one trader said, where did you get that from? I don't know. It looks like a large ascending triangle to me. Study Schaubacher, study Edwards and McGee, study Peter Brandt. Big moves come out of large consolidations, hence the three-day setup. Large moves come out of consolidations. So hopefully you got value from today's video, traders. I've tried to really simplify the importance of understanding these outer boundaries. That's where we get our large potential opportunities from, even if it's just within the session itself. Keep it simple. Keep it high priority. Stick to your best, cleanest trade setups. The rinse and repeat opportunities, 1% better every single day. And may the markets go with you.